Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks Grady, for the very kind introduction. And uh, If you want a third-party view of what Bellevue uh, looks and feels like, you can ask Grady. She was up there in underground herself uh, not that many months ago. Um, so look, thanks a lot for, for taking the time to listen to the presentation today. Uh, we've got a really exciting story to tell at Bellevue. It's a fantastic project in the northern goldfields of Western Australia. It's got everything you want from asset quality to production growth to um, growing reserves, growing resources and a big exploration story. So I'll, uh, I'll get through that over the course of the next 15 minutes. So look, um, when we were here on the, the Gold Coast at the Resource Rising Stars last year, we had a half-built project. You know, we were talking about what the outlook for production was going to be. And I'm proud to say to stand here today and, and talk about the actual project that we've delivered to the market and the great outlook that we have ahead. So we turned the processing plant on in October last year. We rapidly ramped it up. Uh, we put out our first guidance for the first half of this year. Uh, we met that guidance by producing 80,000 ounces. Um, and you know, all, that, all in that time, you know, it was a pretty difficult environment to, to build a gold project um, anywhere in the world. Um, but I think it talks to the, the quality of the project and the quality of the jurisdiction that we operate in that, that Bellevue went from, uh, from discovery to production in under six years, um, which is pretty phenomenal for, for any jurisdiction in the world. And I don't think it could happen anywhere except for Western Australia. Um, all of the key aspects of the mine and the processing plant are, are performing really well. Um, and you know, what, what we also did while we were building the mine was spend a lot of time doing grade control drilling and upgrading the quality of the reserves and resources. Um, we announced a 1.5 million ounce resource recently and it was off the back of that 1.5 million ounce resource, sorry, a reserve uh, that we put out a five year production plan, um, which shows significant growth um, in production out of the asset. It shows significant drop in costs across the asset. Um, and shows the profitability that the mine is going to be producing in a couple of years' time. Um, look, we coupled that with an equity raise to really clear up the balance sheet, um, and it puts us in a really strong position just to pin our ears back and execute over the next couple of years. Um, and what it also does is it gives us funding to be able to explore um, outside of that mine corridor, and, and that's something that our entire team is, is pretty excited about. Look, I'll touch on the, on the balance sheet first. As I said, we, we raised 150 million bucks to, to de-gear that balance sheet. We previously had $220 million of debt. We've now got circa 100 mil of debt, circa 100 mil of cash, and that debt is not due until 2027. So, you know, there's plenty of ability to, to fund the operations from cash flow and, un, and fund that growth plan from here. Um, so it's completely de-risked our balance sheet and completely de-risked our ability to execute that growth plan over, over the next couple of years. Um, and, um, and I'll take you through that in a little bit. But before I do that, I just want to zoom out a little bit and, and talk about the context of the project that we have. So if you have a look globally at assets that have 200,000 ounces of production, uh, five grams per tonne or above, uh, and are in tier one jurisdictions. So, you know, a tier one jurisdiction is some states in Australia, uh, some states in the US and some states in Canada um, and nowhere else. Um, you know, there's only seven of those projects that actually exist that meet those metrics and Bellevue is one of them. Um, the thing that's unique about Bellevue is it's the only one of those assets that isn't owned by a global gold major and it also is the only one that has a significant production growth profile over the next couple of years. So, you know, it really is a fantastic asset that we're, we're happy to own in Bellevue. Um, and we're happy to really realise the full potential of it um, as a part of this plan that we're putting together. So look, where are we? We're, we're in the northern goldfields of Western Australia. It's a, it's a well-known mining district. We're in the Agnew Luna Greenstone Belt. Um, and, you know, you've got Leonora just down the highway down here, obviously a, a very significant um, deposit, Yujundes or Lunas, 10 million ounce plus systems just above. Just to our south is Agnew Lawlers, you know, it's a, another 5 to 10 million ounce camp. And, and Bellevue, which sits in the middle, um, that sort of didn't have any expiration done on it for a 20 year period up until 2017. And, and we do have a conviction that, uh, that Bellevue will be. Hey, testing, sound. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm just waiting for it to come back on. Hello, hello. Yes, you got me now? All right. So anyway, um, we do have conviction that Bellevue is also going to be a five to 10 million ounce system in, in, in such a good jurisdiction. 
If you zoom in on our deposit itself, we have three key loads to talk about, which is Tribune, Bellevue and Deakin, which run north-south through the property. What's important to note with that is that it's only been drilled from a couple of drill platforms. So what you're seeing in blue there is the extent of the places you could put the surface drilling when we define the first three million ounces at Bellevue. Um, and you, know, you can see that, that first three million ounces here um, and what that looks like. You know, it's not super deep, it's only sort of defined to you know, circa 600 metres underground. It's over a 2.8 kilometre strike and, and certainly has room to expand both at depth and, uh, and down dip, um, both to the north and to the south of the side. Um, we have extensively drilled it from surface, but you can see that the concentration of that drilling is within that mine corridor there, and there's not a lot of drilling outside of it, and they're the targets that we can hit now that we're underground and we have the, the drill platforms, but we also have the budget to be able to do some drilling again. Um, the drilling that we have done has been grade control. So grade control drilling is the detailed drilling that you do to, to really upgrade the quality of your your resources to really define your reserves and really underpin the mine plan. And when you have a look at a bunch of the hits that we have across the ore body, you know, you can see the high quality of data that we have to underpin our mine forecasts and mine plans. Um, look, the next thing we do is go in and develop it. So you can see all the development headings on the uh, left-hand side of the page here. Um, you know, what you can see is that we're getting the same grade, the same tenor, we're getting really good reconciliation from the resource model to what we're mining underground. Um, so we open up those excavations, we've got five different mining areas open, and all of those um, are drilled on a 20 by 10 metre drill pattern. So it gives us a really good understanding and really de-risks what that plan looks like. Then we go ahead and we stope off those development drives. And, and stoping is a really important part of our mining cycle because it provides the majority of high grade material to the processing plant. Um, what we've seen with stoping is that we've been able to hit our stoping rates that we require. Um, we're getting better at it as we go through. You can see some of the excavations there um, in front of you. Um, you know, the reason we can get those quality excavations is because of the, the competency of the rock um, and the great ground conditions underground and, and we're able to deliver that, that ore to the plant. You know, the, the big story going forward for us and the thing that really unlocks the productivity at Bellevue is the infrastructure upgrades that are underway. So, we are right at the, the very end of um, a whole bunch of upgrades that have been sort of ongoing for months and months and months. Uh, feels like years sometimes. Um, but this is all culminating in some significant upgrades this quarter. Uh, so we have our life of mine ventilation set up. So you can see what the vent system looks like on the bottom right. We actually have two of these, one in the north, one in the south. Um, the mechanical installation is done and we just need to commission them uh, this month. We've got life of mine pumping systems in the north and the south set up. We've got electrical upgrades, which provides more power to do more work. Um, and we've also started the Tribune decline, which is a different work area and, different, and a different haulage decline. So, you know, a significant amount of infrastructure work that is all getting completed this quarter, which is going to give us a, a great uh, launching point to, to increase those productivities going forward. And, you know, for a good example, the ventilation upgrade alone provides 50% more ventilation to the underground uh, vent circuit as soon as it's turned on at the end of this month, which is obviously a significant driver of underground productivity. You know, what this does is it really gives us, you know, really unlocks this plan to increase production from underground. So what really underpins this is going from an underground mining rate and a, and a processing rate of a million tonne per annum in FY25 this current year up to 1.6 million tonne per annum uh, by FY27, 28. Uh, and you know, these increased rates, um, you know, this is just about going through the mining sequence, um, opening up two new mining areas, and um, you know, that takes a little bit of capital to do that. We're gonna spend that capital over the next two years, and that drops rapidly off. So you've got uh, you know, decreasing all in sustaining costs, you've got decreasing capital, which means um, increasing cash flow once all of that's established and in place. Um, and what it also does is unlock a lot of platforms to, to do exploration. So this is a, a pretty important slide to talk about because you know, it, we talk about the quality of the, the reserve that we have at Bellevue and the quality of the plan, and that has not changed as a part of um, you know, this new, new plan and what we're doing. Um, we've always talked about a high grade core at Bellevue of about a million tonne per annum at six grams per tonne. You can see it in this graph on the, on the right hand side here. Um, in the, um, the gold bars, we're doing 800,000 tonnes at this six grams 
this year, goes to a million tonnes for the next two years, goes to 1.2 for the two years after that. The processing rate will be a little bit higher than that because the processing rate takes into account the, um, the medium grade material, we call it, which is the two to three gram material that we access on the periphery of the high grade as we go access the high grade. So this is essentially material that comes into the plant at a low cost because you've already spent the capital for it to get into the high grade areas. And that's what drives those cost outs because um, you're getting economies of scale. We have a high fixed cost base that we can take advantage of and go in there. So, you know, the high grade core has al always existed and still does exist. We're just bringing in some, some cheaper uh, m medium grade material to fill the mill up and, and drive productivity. Now, as I said, it's, it's fully designed. So, you know, we're, uh, you can see it on the, uh, on the picture there, but, you know, this is FY25 into FY26 into FY27. And the key about FY25 is there's two additional mining areas um, being the, oh, that's not gonna work. There it is, being Deacon North over here and Tribune over here that we're gonna get into. But one of the, the most important things, as I said before, is the exploration side of things. So exploration at Bellevue has been something we've been looking at for a long time and really wanting to do, but we haven't had the platforms and haven't had the funding to be able to do it. And, and that's something that we've unlocked now. So we've got three key drill drives going in. So one in Deakin North, one in Viago, one in su the Southern Drill Drive. And this is gonna give us those platforms to be able to drill out these, uh, these big exploration targets that we're very confident are gonna have um, the gold in them. And look, why are we confident? Um, you know, we've seen it in, in the ground that we've got. So I'll talk a little bit about the high pyrotite that we have when we have high grade at Bellevue. So this is a, an area of the mine called Deakin, uh, Deakin, Maine. We've been mining this and getting some really good, um, very high grade out of it. Um, and we've defined this over, you know, this, this circa 260 metres of plunge extent that we've drilled out in detailed area. When you look out across Deakin and look for high pyrotite, high grade, there's potential for a lot of increases in that. And um, you know, these are areas where you see in the white arrows on here that we're going to be targeting through our detailed drilling over the next 12 months. And this has the ability to put extra ounces in over and above that base case plan that I was talking about earlier. So certainly an ability to, to potentially outperform that plan as we go forward through this in mine um, drilling, if you like. Um, it's not just Deakin, this is Bellevue South, again, very high pyrotite. You can see the, the drill core on the right-hand side of, um, of the page here. And why the high pyrotite is important is because the high pyrotite lights up through downhaul electromagnetics. So um, you get these vectors that you can then target and you drill these vectors and you, and you find um, mineralization. And we have a one-to-one -one correlation between pyrotite and gold at Bellevue. Um, so, you know, drilling down to the southern side, I'll sort of show you here in 3D. If you're drilling off to the right-hand side here, there's a whole bunch of downhill EM targets that have never been drilled that we're now going to have targets to, to go and drill. Um, the exploration drive, um, you can see to the right of the page here, and I'll spin that around with the downhill EM on it. We'll be in a position where we can drill all this downhill EM that way and that way. Um, and then even more extensively to the south um, over the next 18 months or so. So it um, gives us a, a fantastic target to, to, have a, to have a go at. And um, what's really important about Bellevue is that when you do spend money on exploration here, um, you actually do get a lot, of, uh, a lot of success and a lot of results out of it. So if you look at the financial years um, across this graph, when we were spending money across FY20 to 22, we were increasing that resource base. That's how we found three million ounces of resource. While we're building the mine, we didn't spend any money on exploration because the money went into grade control drilling, uh, the money went into building the mine. Um, now, we're, and, and what you saw with the resource is that it stayed flat. So we, we increased the quality of the resource, so inc increased the indicated material, we were able to put out a great mine plan and build a mine off it, um, but we weren't increasing it. What we're going to do now is supercharge the exploration at Bellevue. We're going to spend essentially five years worth in the next two years. Um, and the, the result of that is converting this great exploration target we have, you know, showing the world that we've got, you know, the, not just the three million ounces, but an extra couple of million ounces on top of that. Um, increased resources, increased reserves, increased increase mine life, um, and be a great benefit to everybody. So 
Look, that's the Bellevue story. Um, we're just outside in the booth on the, in the room on the left-hand side here. Happy to chat over the next couple of days. Thank you very much.